<clears throat> testing, testing 101. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now this question has been my most asked question and let's not even waste time. But before I begin, I just quickly need to say that number one, I'm not sponsored by anybody. So if you see my weight loss videos or pictures in an ad, it's not me. It's not true, okay? Number two, I ask that you please listen to the entirety of this video because you will miss a key point and then you will be confused. So just sit back, get a cup of tea, or pounded yam, we are not judging. Just make yourself comfortable. And I will tell you exactly how. I've always been big, big child, big teenager, bigger adult. And in 2018, I was weighing 280 something pounds. I'm going to be speaking in pounds, but I will leave kilos or um, stones on the screen. Anyway, I was 280 something pounds. And in 2018, summer of 2018, I decided to actually try and lose weight because I had never before tried it. All oh, my aunties and uncles were like, Deborah, lose weight, lose weight. I'd never tried. But in 2018, I said, let me try. And back then, what was trending was keto. Everyone was talking about keto, 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 and fasting. And, you know, I researched keto. And what is keto? Keto is basically low carbs, no sugar, high, good fats, okay? So basically, meat and some veg. That was basically it. And so I started eating ketosis. And what happens if you do ketosis the right way? Your body enters something called ketosis where it burns its own fat for energy. So you're not hungry and you are burning your own fat. So you lose weight. And because ketosis doesn't make you as hungry, you can fast with it. So they advise people to do keto and fasting. So that is what I decided to do in 2018, to do keto with fasting. So I would have one meal a day, a big keto meal, and fast drinking water throughout the day. So that is what I did with some exercise, but I was exercising for like 20, 25 minutes. And what ended up happening is that I started losing weight fairly quickly. I was even shocked. I was like, wow, that's all it takes. Literally eating at the calorie deficit. And so 2018, 2019, I'm doing that. I'm losing a lot of weight. 2020, in the middle of the, when everybody is gaining weight, I'm losing because I'm doing my keto one meal a day. And by the end of 2020, I was weighing 202 pounds. So I had lost about 80 pounds in the space of two years. And I was feeling myself and I gave out all my big clothes in 2020. And I bought my size 12s, size 10s, and I was feeling myself, okay? And in 2021, New Year, I was like, okay, I want to get to my goal of 180 pounds. So we can do this. 2021, I realized that I wasn't really gaining, but I wasn't losing either. So the entire 2021, I sort of maintained my weight, which for someone who's working so hard makes no sense, okay? I was still doing my one minute a day. I was still working out at least three, four times a week. And I was not losing, but I was not gaining. So I didn't complain too much. I just thought maybe because I'm smaller, you know, my body's trying to adapt. I don't know. 2022 January, I got on the scale after the Christmas holidays and I weighed myself. I was about 206, 207 pounds. So I was like, oh, I'm gaining a little. So January, like January 5th, I was like, okay, the new year has begun. I can do this new year resolution. I'm going to get to my goal. This is the year. So I started 2022 with a bang. I went back to one meal a day, but working out twice a day. I said, I'm going to work out a little bit more just so my body understands that we're going back to losing weight. So I do that for a few weeks. I get on the scale and I'm 210. I'm like, ah, something is not right. Because guys, I have never gained weight doing my keto meals. But I said, you know what? It's because I'm smaller now, of course. I'm going to do one keto meal every two days. And I'm going to work out twice a day. And basically, the day I'm not eating, I'm going to drink water. So I said, okay, let me try that. Did that for a few weeks. Worked out almost every day, six times a week. 
I got on the scale, I'm 214 pounds. I said, no, 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 no. Something is wrong. But instead of saying that out loud, I said, maybe I'm still eating too much. You know, maybe 1,300 calories every two days is still a lot of food. Let me try and eat less and exercise more. And so I decided to do one keto meal every three days. So I would drink water for three days, only water. Then I would break the fast with one keto meal, one low calorie, no sugar, no carbs meal. And then I would start another three days of fasting. And I did that while working out twice a day, every day, because I was like, I'm, I'm trying to get to 180 pounds. And so I did that. And after a few weeks, and you guys, if you, if you followed me, then you saw me posting it and a lot of you called me crazy. And I was like, Oh, you don't know anything. And when I got on the scale, I was like 200 and I want to say like 220 something pounds. And I was so confused because it wasn't making sense. How am I gaining weight when I'm working out and I'm barely eating? But instead of saying something is wrong here, I still said, maybe I'm still eating too much or maybe my body's tired of ketosis. I was trying to find excuses, you know? But my friend back then was doing something called lipo trim and she started for her birthday and she lost like 10 pounds and she was like, Deborah, stop doing keto. Try lipo trim. Lipo trim is basically a shake's diet where you drink a, sh a shake twice a day and that is it. You don't eat any food, you just drink the shakes and you do that for as long as you want. And then once you're happy with the weight, you can stop. So I was like, okay, maybe that's something different. At least it's better than having no food for three days. At least I get to drink something twice a day. And I think it was like 300 calories a day. So you're, the shakes are really low calorie. So to do that in the UK, you need to go to a pharmacy. And the pharmacy will give you one week's dose that you get on the scale. They weigh you and you go. After one week, you come back, they'll weigh you just so that they can keep, keep you on track. Okay. So I went to the pharmacy, I took my first week's dose and I was like, I'm gonna be skinny. I did the first week very easily because by then I was so used to doing one meal every three days. I was like, ah, oh, drinking two shakes a day, no problem. So after one week, I went back to the pharmacy expecting her to tell me I lost, you know, five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever. I get on the scale and the woman doesn't talk. So I'm like, hello? And she said, why did you cheat, Debbie? And I was like, ah, oh, I didn't cheat, my dear sister. I didn't cheat. She was like, well, you gained a kilo. A kilo is about, what, three and a half pounds? So I was now 223 point dejected. I was like, you know what? Ah, oh, please keep the next week's dose. This is clearly not working. I'm going back to keto. And so I went back, and this is around March. We're now in March. January, I was 208. At 207, 208, I am now... 220 something you know so i said let me go back to keto because clearly this is not working and so i went back to doing keto one meal every four days and when i tell you i was miserable i was miserable because on top of not eating for four consecutive days i would work out twice a day and then i i decided to add 20,000 steps on top of the two workouts so i would work out for 40 minutes twice a day and then 20,000 steps every day in the name of, I want to lose weight. I'm wondering about me. If I'm trying something, I'm going to do it well because then I can say that I tried my best, you know? And, um, so I did that. I was feeling miserable. I hated it. And I knew it was not something that was consistent. At least one meal a day. I got so used to it. I could potentially do it for the rest of my life and be okay. But one meal every four days was miserable. On the fourth day, I had no energy to even get up, but I had to get up and exercise twice a day and still do 20,000 steps on top of it. And I know you're thinking, oh, you must have lost weight by then. But I got on the scale and can you believe it? I gained. I was 200 and maybe 27 pounds after weeks of one meal every four days, keto, low carb, no sugar. I, in that moment, realized something is wrong with my body. And I knew something was wrong with me because I started getting symptoms I never had before. So some of the symptoms were my periods, I know this is TMI, were getting really heavy. Now I've always had heavy periods, but they got really heavy to the point where it was like concerning, like I can't leave the house during my time of the month. You know, 
then i started getting cramps on my ovaries during ovulation every month i would have intense pain either on my left or on my right which i later found out were um ovarian cysts i think they're called uh and then some of them would drop so that's why that's what would cause the pain and then i started bleeding in between periods and that is the thing that worried me that is the thing that made me go okay now something is wrong because it happened the first time and i was like maybe it's because i'm working out too hard and i'm not eating but then the second month the third month after the fourth month which is like around may that's when i said something is wrong because i'm not supposed to do that okay and when you google things like that they will tell you things like you're dying you have six weeks to live you know cancer those are the things that were popping up when I would Google all the symptoms I was having. And because of that, I got really worried. So I went to the doctor. And one thing about me, you will never catch me in the hospital. You will never catch me going to treatment. You will not catch me. I will deal with it at home. Okay, I broke my toe. That's not, that's not a problem. I just have to rest. So <laughs> I didn't go to the doctor until I started bleeding in between periods. And when I went, they of course gaslight you. They say, it's because of your weight. You know, try and eat less. Meanwhile, I'm like looking at the doctor like, doctor, I'm doing one meal every four days. But they didn't believe me, of course. But the only reason they believed me, and that is really concerning, but that's the NHS for you. The only reason they believed me is because I showed them my track record. I said, look, I'm not a beginner at this. In 2018, I started losing weight and I maintained the weight and I lost even in the middle of the... When everybody was busy gaining, I was still focused. I said, I understand nutrition. I understand calories deficit. I understand fitness. So you're not going to gaslight me into th telling me that I'm just eating too much because I'm barely eating 1,000 calories every four days, okay? So because of that, they pushed me to get tested. And after testing, they found out I had a hormonal imbalance, which to me wasn't so, so much of a surprise, only because a lot of my families have hormonal imbalances. Uh, PCOS, fibroids, endometriosis, a lot of my family members have that. So I wasn't completely shocked. And they figured out that it was PCOS. And to be honest, I still don't understand what PCOS means. But when you Google PCOS, they tell you the first symptom of PCOS is uncontrollable weight gain. A lot of people realize they have PCOS when they start gaining weight and it makes no sense. But some of the other symptoms were what I was experiencing. And PCOS causes infertility. Now, when I read that, I was like, hold up. The fact that I'm feeling pain in my ovaries, I'm bleeding in between periods, my periods feel so heavy. Are you telling me this is causing infertility? So I was like, what is the cure? So they gave me a few treatment options and they said the only way to make PCOS better is to lose weight. But PCOS makes you gain weight. So it's like a vicious cycle. So basically they were like, just try your best to lose weight. We can recommend a few things. So the first thing they recommended was um, Saxenda which some people know it as Ozempic. Now, I had never heard of this. I was like, okay, what is this? It's basically an injection that they give you to make you not hungry. It's like an appetite suppressant. But for somebody like me that was already doing one meal every four days, my dear sisters and brothers, an appetite suppressant was not going to do it. But because the doctor said, try it, I said, let me try. So I went home and I started injecting myself. And within the first few days, the symptoms I experienced were scary i started getting like heart palpitations i started having diarrhea every little single small item i ate would come out from the other end i know tmi but i started vomiting i started getting like hot flushes sweats and my heart beating is the thing that scared me because i was like listen i'm not about to have heart failure in the name of i want to lose weight okay and so because of that i they switched me to something else i don't know, remember the name is it ozempic or sexenda anyway they switched me to something else and again i'm still feeling the same thing so i stopped taking them so the next thing they recommended was a healthy lifestyle so they said you know follow this diet plan and so i said let me try and follow it you know so for one month i think we're now in june for one month i tried the the weight plan they gave me and after a month i get on the scale and when I tell you, I was now 238 or something like that. 238 pounds. I screamed. I was so angry. But at the same time, I was like, I understand now it's not my fault. It's not my fault. You can't fault me. And then I read online that, you know, a lot of people complain about PCOS and weight gain. And so people said, try a vegan diet. So me, I said, ah, is it because of meat? No problem. I gave up meat, my baby. And if you go from keto... To being a vegan you know how hard it is 
I gave up meat for one month. I got on the scale. I gained. I was like, I will never try that again in my life. <laughs> I was miserable the entire time. Imitation chicken does not taste like chicken. Imitation beef sometimes can taste like beef, but it was nasty. Okay, so I went vegan and I gained. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm now 240 pounds. And after that, I said, no, I'm, I'll give up. I give up. I, I, I remember I cried. I think that was the first time I cried. I cried and I said, let me just eat. If I'm fasting and I'm working out like a crazy person and I'm gaining, then I'd rather eat. And I started eating. And if you guys remember, around that June, June, July, I just went crazy. I started eating, 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 everything on sight. I rise every day. I was like, my dear, because I can't come and sit and come and... So, after a month, I got on the scale. I think my senses came back to me. And I was like, Deborah, don't let, don't lose the progress you've done, you know, all this while. So, I got on the scale. I was 340 something, maybe 344, 345. I said, oh, I didn't even gain that much. You know, I ate like a crazy person for a month and I didn't even gain. Anyway, I went back on keto. I said, you know, let me try one more time. Maybe my body now has adapted. I went back on keto and... I was just miserable and ironically in my depression because i would cry almost every day but in my depression i started making my first and last day series which i feel like to date is some of the funniest content i've made and so many people were finding me funny in my darkest moments you guys were laughing at me while i while i was crying but it's okay i enjoyed making me laugh and that's what kept me busy and that's what kept me from going into a really dark depression but i didn't understand why i was gaining weight and i was just tired but i was still doing my one meal a day while trying to figure it out and i was gaining but at least i was gaining slowly that by august i think i got on the scale and i was 252 pounds and that's what scared me and i started googling you know pcos weight gain things that i could try anything i see i would try and I remember I've seen this pill called Inositol. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. But it's basically like, I don't know, some vitamin that helps people that have PCOS. So I tried that. And when I tell you, my face swelled up so much, I, I was like a whale. Like, I, I can't explain it. My face was like a moon. And um, I started getting yellowing eyes. And I knew that yellowing eyes means something in your liver or maybe your kidney and so i was like you know what <laughs> let me stop let me stop before i make it worse anyway the pcos symptoms were getting worse my back pain was getting worse periods was everything was worse and i was really miserable and i remember my mom she called me aside and she said you know sometimes you're just meant to be big genetically and then i remember thinking yeah but at the same time it's not fair because i'm trying my very best to not gain you know i understand if some people are genetically meant to be big and they are eating and they're big but me i'm not eating and i'm big it makes no sense and when she said that i was like yeah maybe you know and it didn't help that when i went to visit my aunties they would scream they would say oh debbie what happened you were so small now you're so big it makes no sense please go back to what you're doing please go back home meanwhile i'm fasting i'm starving myself i've not had food in so many days and all these aunties are like ah please don't go back to doing diet i don't understand why you're big you're big again and that would make me so angry because i was like if only you knew but i would just be like yeah yeah i'll go back to dieting don't worry but then everything changed in august when my friend who i hadn't seen since the since 2020 she came to see me and the last time I saw her, she was at size 26. But when she came to the room, she was a size 8. And likewise for her, the last time she saw me, I was like a size 12. And when she saw me, I was approaching a size 20. Guys, I gained so much weight. So when we saw each other, we screamed because she was like, what happened to you? And I was like, what happened to you? And she basically told me she had weight loss surgery. Now, when she said that, I was like, oh, okay, no problem. I know so many people that had weight loss surgery and not once has weight loss surgery popped into my mind because I've always believed that I can do it. I was like, my dear, I can do it. But when she said it, she was like, wait, let me tell you something. And she told me this. She was like, I used to always think about my weight. I would wake up in the morning and feel disgusting looking at myself in the mirror. Walk down the street, I would catch my reflection, feel disgusting. Think about how fat I am every single day. But now that I had the weight loss surgery and I've lost the weight, I wake up in the morning and I'm free. She was like, I think about nothing concerning weight. And she said, I feel free. I, anyway, she said that and I was still like, yeah, okay, no problem, thank you. But when she left, I started thinking, what do I actually have to lose? 
I've tried everything. I went vegan for God's sake. I did one meal every four days. I tried Ozempic. What do I actually have to lose? And so when she left, that same day, I called my mom and I said, Ma, I'm thinking of having weight loss surgery. And I was expecting her to slap me from the phone, through the phone, to slap me. I said, if I slap you, my friend, go to the gym. But instead, she paused and she said, go ahead. And I was like, hello, am I speaking to my mom? She was like, no, go ahead. Because every day you're fasting, you're starving yourself, you're, you're, you're fasting, you're fasting, you're working out and you're gaining. It makes no sense. So go ahead. And with that, I was like, you know what? I have a blessing. I asked my friend where she went and she told me and I knew the place already because I have so many of my friends that have done it and most of them went there. So that same day, to show you how quick I was like, I have nothing to lose. I called up the clinic and I said, when is your first available date for this weight loss surgery? And they told me two weeks from now on September 8th. And I said, book me, I will be there. Now. What is weight loss surgery? Because when you say surgery, people expect they open you up, they put you to sleep, it's seven hour surgery. And, I, and it's not even that. I can't even call it surgery. I think it's more like a procedure, but the only reason they call it surgery is because they have to put you to sleep. But literally, it, it's a procedure of 20 minutes. It's 20 something minutes. And the weight loss surgery I did, because there's a few different ones. There's gastric bypass and gastric sleeve. I did the gastric sleeve. And what is gastric sleeve? Gastric sleeve is a procedure where they make tiny incisions in your stomach. So for me, they made three small holes. I can't even call them holes. Three small dots in my stomach. One for the camera, one for the laser, and one for the pliers. And they remove the stomach, your organ. They remove like 80%, 50%, 60%, 85%, depending on who you are and how big you are. They remove 85% of your stomach. And they remove the stomach, the organ, not the belly. The stomach where your food enters and digests and what that does is that your stomach is now like the size of a one-year-old or a two-year-old so you're only eating small amounts of food now I know you're thinking but Debbie you already are eating so little why would gastric sleeve be an option because I googled PCOS and gastric sleeve and the testimonies I read and the videos I saw completely changed my mind because people who had PCOS had gastric sleeve and suddenly something in that procedure changed their hormones and their hormones became leveled and that enabled them to lose weight. I don't know exactly what, but I think as they're doing the surgery, they remove one of the hormones that sometimes triggers PCOS. So because of that, your symptoms kind of reduce and because of that, you can lose weight again. So after having read that, that is the reason I booked. I was like, you know what? My mom said, yes, I'm Googling PCOS and gastric sleeve. People are losing weight and they're feeling better and their symptoms are going, I'm on it. And reading things like infertility is the thing that made me want to book it even faster. Because I was like, listen, let me do it now before I book, before I waste time and I do irreversible damage to my body. I'm young. I've not had kids. So the fear of infertility scared me straight i booked and i was there in that two weeks so now that you know what gastric sleeve is depending on how big you are because they don't open you up they don't cut your stomach open they use a little camera to see they want to make sure that they have a good view of your stomach so they will tell you to do a liquid diet basically everything you're eating is in liquid form just so that you can shrink your liver because as a big person you might have a fatty liver so they will tell you to do a liquid fast so depending on how big you are i think the maximum of the, uh, the maximum time is two weeks or for me um because i wasn't as big i uh, they told me to do three days now on the day of the procedure i was 250 pounds remember that because it gets good okay it gets good so the day of surgery, no, the day before surgery, they do a million and one tests. They're checking everything. They want to make sure that you're good. You know, they do, they're checking every area. I've never in my life had this many checks done. And when it was time to check my liver, because a lot of people get denied in this stage, because they'll check your liver and your liver is still fatty. They will say, you know what? No, because we can't see the stomach. So they will deny you. So when they were checking my liver, the doctor kind of screams. He goes, ah! I said, doctor, what? What? I'm thinking the doctor is about to tell me your liver is too fat. You need to go. But he looks at me and he goes, you have been fasting, haven't you? I was like, Ogasa, if only you knew. 
because I had more fasting days than eating days this year. But he was like, I can tell because uh, your liver, I'm guessing my liver must have been the size of a finger. So he was like, oh, fantastic. We can go ahead. Anyway, so day of the surgery comes. I'm first. I'm meeting so many people that are doing it. <laughs> a lot of people, even some of the people that are selling slimming tea. But let me not, let me not, let me not cast anybody. But just don't believe anything you see online. <laughs> anyway, so I'm first. I go first. And 25 minutes later, they're waking me up to say it's done. I'm like, oh, that was fast. I went at 9, 9.25. I was back in my room like, okay. So now, because your stomach is the size of a two-year-old and because you just had a laser cut it through, there's a few days of healing. And, you know, they tell you, obviously, you cannot eat food straight away because your stomach is healing. And because your stomach is also tiny, you're still learning how to kind of understand your new stomach so you know the first few days they kind of gave me water and like tea with no sugar no spice nothing nothing that was like spiced or seasoned <laughs> they were giving me soup like imagine just having soup that has no salt no seasoning it was horrible but all i was drinking was water so i did three days liquid diet right day of surgery i'm 250 pounds i you know the first few days i'm only drinking water Drinking water, drinking water, because I'm not eating any of those things they're giving me. I'm like, please, ew. I don't want tea. I don't want none of that. Because if you're not going to put sugar, I don't want it. So I'm just drinking water. And I'm, you know, I'm used to just not eating. And even the drinking of the water is kind of making me full. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but everyone around me was complaining. Everybody was hungry, which is not easy, to be honest. Imagine having five days, six. Some people have not eaten for two weeks. So imagine, you know, you're starving in your mind, right? So... After one week, one week post-op, I get on the scale. Everyone's getting on the scale. Everyone, everyone's like, Debbie, come on, weigh yourself. Look, I've lost 10 pounds. I've lost 14 pounds. I've lost 11 pounds. So me, I get on the scale all excited, like, oh, let me see this weight loss. Because by this point, I've not had food in like a weekend. I get on the scale. I am 251 pounds. I gained a pound. I look at the doctor. The doctor looks at me. I look at the doctor, the doctor looks at me like, you know, it's still early days, I'm sure you will, you will lose, you know. <laughs> I said, Doc doctor, you, you better pray. Anyway, you know, week two, again, at this point, I'm only eating protein shakes because um, they tell you to drink protein shakes week two. So week two, only protein shake, I'm still not eating any food. I'm having like maybe 90 calories a day, you know. I get on the scale guys i am 250 i'm jumping like whoa i lost a pound the original pound i gained i lost it yay week three week three i'm eating soft food they say you can introduce soft food like boiled eggs but make sure you chew really slowly and when i tell you a boiled egg would take me like an hour and a half to eat and after that eating that boiled egg i'm full for hours you know so i'm eating boiled egg tuna things that are soft so week three i get on the scale guys i gained the one pound i lost People are celebrating 50 pounds, 40 pounds, 25 pounds weight loss. I'm gaining. Week four, I'm still eating soft foods. I'm introducing things like chicken, chewed really well, you know. I'm introducing things slowly, slowly. I'm eating like 250 calories maybe a day, but probably less than that, you know. I get on the scale. Guys, I'm still 251 pounds. My mates are celebrating 40, 50 pounds weight loss. In that moment, I was like, okay, can I donate my body to science? O open me up investigate because how am i okay how how possible week five i get on the scale guys i'm still 251 at this point i give up i said you know what it's fine it is well at least i tried everything on the list i'm good and it's not working that's fine now we know that is not something i could do i could potentially have done week six you know at this point i'm just growing through the motions i'm eating a little bit more so i'm eating like 260 270 calories a day and i get on the scale I'm 247. I said, ah, 247 pounds. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Week seven, I get on the scale 243. I said, what? And from then on, I started losing weight. So guys, it took me six weeks to lose any weight. Six weeks of eating 100, 200 calories a day, maybe, to see considerable weight loss. And from week six, all the way to week 14 
So from week six, 247 pounds to week 14, I lost all the weight that I had gained in 2022. So I had the surgery September 8th. By January, January 1, I was 199 pounds, a weight that I had never been before. Maybe since I was like 10 or 11. I was 199 pounds and I felt great. And I cannot lie to you. I said to myself, if I do this uh, gastric sleeve, I'm not going to exercise. I'm not going to fast. I'm going to have three meals a day, no matter how small they might be. I'm going to have three meals a day and a snack because I want to be normal. I don't want to do this fasting. I, mean, I don't want to do this gastric sleeve and then go back to eating like a rabbit. I want to be normal. I want to wake up in the morning like a normal human being and have breakfast and not be afraid to gain. Right? So I didn't fast. I didn't exercise. And by January, I was 199 pounds. And you guys saw me. I was living my best life. I, I, make, I made a slide on my Instagram called enjoyment. And I was just eating everything that I desired. Of course, I was eating a little bit. But I wasn't restricting myself. I wasn't running away from carbs. I wasn't running away from all the things that in ketosis is considered bad. I said, I just want to be normal. You know, I know how to eat healthy. But once in a while, I want to have cake. Once in a while, I want to wake up in the morning and have breakfast, you know? So I didn't fast, I didn't exercise, and I lost weight. And that is how I knew that without this surgery, I could never have lost weight. I'm sorry, but eating 150 calories a day for six weeks is not something I could have done without this surgery. Try and eat one boiled egg for six weeks a, a day and see how you feel. See if it's possible. See if you don't pass out. But because of this gastric sleeve, one boiled egg filled me up, okay? So I knew I could never have done this. I want to tell you from the surgery day up until now, I've not had bleeding in between periods. I've not had an ovarian cyst. I've not, I know ovarian cysts have ruptured. I've not had the super heavy periods that would make me stay at home. My periods have just gone back to how it was before. It's still heavy, but at least it's not as heavy as I can't leave my house, you know, for the next three days. So I'm back to feeling like myself and it's great to be able to lose weight. So as of today, I am officially one year post-op and I weigh 168 pounds. Now my goal was 180, of course I've surpassed that, so I lowered it to 165 and I was like, if I can see myself as being 165, that wouldn't be a problem. So I'm still trying to lose three pounds, but I think I will in no time. So I'm very happy with it, but how and ever, I'm not here to recommend surgery, God forbid, you will never hear those words from my mouth. But I'm here to tell you my story, what happened, what, how I did it, and what worked and what didn't work for me. This is not me telling you what you should do or I'm just telling you I'm an advocate for both. You can do it without surgery because for three years I did it. 2018 to 2021 I was doing it and I didn't have two heads and I survived. Then I did the surgery. So I, I know both sides, okay? And I'm not here to tell you to choose one because at the end of the day, I would rather you know how to diet first than do the surgery. Anyway, the only reason I, this surgery might be hard for someone who has never dieted in their life is because mentally you're still hungry. This surgery doesn't fix your mind. If you, you wake up in the morning and you want to have your usual breakfast or whatever, you can't. Even if you want to, you can't. It's a lot of vomiting. You will vomit because your, your stomach is the size of a little fist. You cannot eat like you used to. And... A lot of people struggle with this. A lot of people end up gaining the weight back because what do they do? They start drinking their calories in liquid forms. Milkshake, ice cream, liquid soup. They will swallow it in the name of I'm hungry mentally. That's why I said this, this gastric sleep does not fix your mind. So if you really want to do it, think about what it's like to feel hungry and seeing everybody around you eating like they normally do and you cannot eat, you cannot join in. And Personally, for me, my taste has changed completely after this gastric sleep. So things like fries, potatoes, that used to be my weakness. Now I don't even like them. I can't stand them. Rice, pasta, things that are dry. They have to be covered in like a lot of stew or a lot of sauce for me to enjoy them because I find dry foods really boring. Things like bread, pasta, they don't really move me. But they didn't really move me before because on ketosis, you can't even have all those things in keto. So I'm fine with them. But you know, I miss potatoes, I miss fries, I miss all those things, but I just find them so boring and so bland. And so your flavor will change after this procedure. 
anyway the reason I had to wait this long to tell you guys, because believe me, I wanted to tell you from day one, is because the moment, I wanted to, to tell you guys in January, the moment somebody realized I was losing weight, but to be honest, none of you noticed until like March. That is fine. But I wanted to share it in January. January, as I was about to share it, because I know so many people that have done this, so I knew it was something that I had to share. The moment I wanted to share it, one of my friends who had the procedure had a complication. She had this procedure here. I didn't. I went to Turkey. I'm not here to tell you that Turkey is better or the UK is better. My dear, it's everyone. For me, it was the same. If anything, I prefer Turkey, but you didn't hear from me. Anyway, <laughs> so she had complications. So she had it here in the UK, just to show you that. My dear, you can have complications anywhere. So because of that, I was like, let me just wait. And, you know, I kind of spoke to people. A lot of people said, after a year, you're pretty much okay. So I wanted to share it. I've always had the intention to share it. But just to be safe, I was like, let me just wait. In case, God forbid, anything arises, then I can give you an overall review at the end of the one year. So I'm now one year post-op. I've not had complications. I'm going to make a detailed video of all of that if you want to know. If you want to know, join the group. Subscribe on my Instagram and uh on my series on TikTok, and I will make detailed uh, videos, as many questions as you want to ask, ask away. We're going to have sessions, WhatsApp, but all of that is going to come later. Um, anyway, so that is the reason I didn't share it. I've always wanted to share it, but now I'm sharing it. Finally, so many people asked me. Yes, so that is what I did. And it would be irresponsible of me to make a video, and ha and because I have such a big platform, it will be irresponsible of me to make this video and not tell you where I went. So I'm only telling you where I went. It's not sponsored because I paid. I'm only telling you where I went just so you can make a conscious decision. If this is something you're thinking of, I'm going to tell you where I went. So I went to a place called Clinic Hub. Now, I don't know what Clinic Hub is doing left, right and center. The Clinic Hub I went to is the bariatric team. And the only reason I went to them, as I said, is because a lot of my friends went there and they've all said good things. Now, Clinic Hub is not... A surgery place it's not like a clinic it's not a hospital they are basically coordinators and what they do is they plan your every move from the moment you land to the moment you go they will take care of you 100% they will bring translators drivers hotel what you can eat in the hotel the staff the doctors the nurses they will basically coordinate everything around you and for me they treated me like a VIP star they didn't know who I was, but they treated me like a star, like a celebrity. So I recommend them 100%. And once you leave and you go back to the UK, you have a dietitian 24-7. You can call, text the doctor at any time through the clinic hub. So that's why I recommend them 100%. However, always do your own research. I'm only telling you why I went and why I like them. Now, because there's so many million and one numbers, I don't want you to go and say, oh, Deborah, you recommended me to this clinic, and it's not the place you went to. I've left the form in my description box and I will also leave it in my bio, in the link in my bio of where I went to. So they will take you straight to WhatsApp, the people I spoke to. So at least you know where I went. It will take you to directly to their WhatsApp um, number. So if you have any questions, just fill the form and they will contact you. If you have any questions whatsoever, they will answer it for you. Um, I hope you found this helpful. That is, uh, this video is very long, but I hope you watched all of this because if you skipped bits, you will now ask me questions and I'll be like, I said it in the video. But yeah, I hope you um, found this video helpful. As I said, I'm going to make a dedicated group just for weight loss, for people who want to know more, for people who want to know what I ate, some of the pros and cons I have, where I went, weight loss plan, all of that. Not just for the surgery group or not just for the surgery questions. If you have any questions about keto, weight loss, how I maintain the weight, how I lost the weight in the first place, what exercise, where I went, all of that, you ask me questions in this dedicated group. So at least I'm not spamming everybody else that has no interest in weight loss, okay? But I have one favor. If you made it this far, you are my favorite. Yes, you. You are my favorite. And I have one favor to ask. I always think about young people watching my videos and being influenced whether good or bad, I don't know. They might be influenced to take rust, rush, drastic decisions based on what I've said, okay? So, if you ever see people commenting things like, oh, she had weight loss surgery, oh, she had a gastric sleeve, to whoever might have asked what I've done, 
I would like you guys to either direct them to my video or to tell them why I had the gastric sleeve and how this that gastric sleeve is not the only way to lose weight. You can actually exercise and eat healthy. You, I refuse to believe that everybody out there has PCOS. Sometimes your weight gain is based just because you are eating too much and no one can tell you that but yourself. So I always say, look in the mirror. If you're eating too much, if you're eating 3000 calories a day, that is the only reason you're gaining weight. You cannot blame other things if you're not dieting. Okay. So if you ever do come across those comments, a quick, the reason she did this, but also that's not the only thing she did. Keto also works. You don't have to be rash and go and book a gastric sleeve because a lot of people were leaving comments uh, over the months saying things like, oh, she must have done Ozempic. Oh, she did Ozempic, which I hate because why are you assuming? Because you're wrong. Oh, she did Ozempic. And then I always imagine a young person reading that and that is the reason why she goes to buy Ozempic. Not knowing that it's dangerous, not knowing that it almost ended my life. You know what I mean? So always be careful of leaving comments deducting and deducing when you were not there you were not there oh she had a tummy talk meanwhile what do you mean meanwhile what do you mean how does a tummy talk help you lose 90 pounds i don't understand but just help me if you ever see comments like this to give a full story or just link them to my video but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video i'm not gonna waste any more of your time if you have any questions subscribe to my group because that's where you ask questions um but yeah, I hope you found this helpful. And as always, as I said, I left the information of where I went to down below. Whoever is saying I went to this location A and location B, or she went there, if you ever see my pictures elsewhere, just know that it's not true. The link below is the only place I went to. The only place. Okay, so if you see my pictures anywhere else, or my videos anywhere else, they are lying. But also, I just want to say that I'm not sharing this video to ask permission. I'm not telling you where I went so that you, I can have your blessing because I could care less because they were telling me infertility. Tomorrow, if I ask you to carry my baby, will you? They were telling me I was at risk of infertility. Will you carry my baby? I think not. So this is not a, I'm asking for approval because this is what I did video. It is not. It is simply telling you what I did it's because you people keep asking literally that. And also another thing is do not believe everything you see online because I could literally have come out and said, Oh, I just ate healthy and exercised and I drank tea once a day with ginger and you know you guys would have believed me so I'm not saying thank me but I'm saying thank me <laughs> okay I just say just be wary of everything and the information you get out there but yes this is what I did and it worked for me and I'm happy and you know a lot of people say I wish I did it sooner I don't wish I did it sooner because I'm glad that I learned discipline. I learned what it is to fast, eat healthy. I understood nutrition. So I'm just glad I did it now. And the symptoms are gone and I feel better. And I'm no longer worried about infertility or any of that. And yeah, I'm happier. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.